Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, welcome everyone. I'm excited to be here again this week. Uh, it's just uh, a beautiful week and we are really seeing a lot going on in uh, our organization and I would imagine probably with your organization as well. As we start to enter into spring, it's an exciting time uh, as many organizations, uh, possibly yours, is moving into a dinner season. Uh, this is a little bit of a new venture for some organizations as they are starting to move into a dinner for the first time in person in quite some time. Some of you ventured into the in-person dinner season last spring, and so uh, you are probably looking at a larger dinner than you had last spring. But either way, even if you are going virtual one more year, uh, these are exciting times, and I am just excited for you. You're hopefully starting to have more in-person meetings with people, and that you are just enjoying less restrictions and a greater ability to be able to see people. And it seems that more and more people uh, of our, our perspective from the donor side are wanting to see you and meet with you and hear about the exciting things that are happening. So I'm delighted about that. If you are interested in joining our ever-growing community, please consider subscribing to this channel. Uh, we have a lot of benefits of membership and would love to have you as part of this community making a difference in our world. At this point, I'd like to dive right into our first question. Our question today is from Kelly in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And Kelly asks, what is the role of a board of directors or advisory board in fundraising? Well, thanks Kelly for that question. And I can't tell you how often that question comes up. And I've addressed it in some other videos, but I thought I'd take a few minutes now and kind of address that. Many nonprofit leaders are really unsure, it seems to me, about exactly what the role should be of a board of directors and even a board of advisors. And I thought I would address some of those issues today really by starting out with the area of recruitment. It's so important that you recruit the right board members from the beginning. You want to make sure that there's a clear understanding of your mission, vision, and values but you also want to make sure that you have individuals who are interested in participating with your organization with their life. What I mean by that, and you've heard me possibly if you watched this program for quite some time, you know life stands for labor, influence, finances, and expertise. It's that life acrostic and labor being willing to commit their time, not just at board meetings, but also respond to emails, respond to phone calls, uh, respond when leaders, when you've got questions, they respond to those and respond on a timely manner. Uh, I had a very close friend who used to share her frustrations that her she would put questions out to the board, a five member board, and would never get a response back. And that can be extremely frustrating. But labor also includes doing things like being a table host for their dinner, or helping to volunteer at a walkathon or a jogathon, or any other fundraising activity that you do. But also from the I stands for influence. And that is making sure that your board member is open to being a representative or an influencer with their friends. They use their reputation, piggyback their reputation to be a representative and to impact others, to introduce others to your organization. That could include meetings with the leader and themselves, but it also could include and could mean that they are willing to have meetings by themselves as well. Board members need to be trained to be able to meet individually with donors and they need to be able to represent your organization. There should be some training that takes place of all board members on how to present the organization and how to challenge for funding. 
Uh, the F stands for finances. No board member should be involved in your organization without already being a donor to your organization or giving. In fact, I always recommend the best place to find board members are right there on your donor list, those individuals who are currently giving and especially giving at a significant level. Because generally, we find that where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. And it's important that you look for those individuals who are currently giving and start with them. See if there's good potential board members from there. And also, if your board is not a priority to them, you need to talk about where your organization is in the list of priorities. There's a lot of individuals I know who serve on three, four, five, six, seven, or more boards. It is very difficult to make your organization a priority when they're serving on other boards. And so your giving and the time that they commit to your organization should be at least second to their local church if they're a faith-based uh, or if they are people of faith. But you want to try and make sure that you're number one or number two on their list of organizations they give to. And the last being expertise. That is using their skills, their talents, their giftings to be of service to your organization. Are they bringing it to the table expertise in finance, expertise in marketing, in if they're an attorney, are they helping you give you good advice on the law, contracts, other areas in that? Uh, or if they're part of a, uh, if you have a social services or a health-based organization, are you recruiting doctors to be on your board or at least potentially on your board of advisors? All those things are kind of, of, of important to what you're doing. And so make sure that you start with the life acrostic. Find individuals who are giving their life to your organization. Then you need to really explain to them the importance of being committed to your organization and being valuable contributors to your organization. What I mean by that is attending regularly your board meetings, staying up, being prepared for those board meetings before they come, being, being up to date on the latest news information and all the goings on within your organization and also be willing to give their time to be able to help you and give you advice in that area. We're not talking about board members who come into the office every day and serve a, to, and serve a, a um, operating role and, and help make day-to-day -day decisions. That's the role of senior leadership. But board members should be there to be able to give advice. They should help to reestablish and set up, if it isn't done already, your mission and your vision. And also to help ratify and confirm goals that are established by leadership. And they should be part of that goal setting process. They should be involved in strategic planning times because they are owners of the organization and you want to make sure that not only formally but informally they are owners to your organization and if they're involved in the decision making process they're also going to want to be involved financially helping to fund your organization so the two work hand in hand you're getting them to be involved and be owners and part of that ownership is financially now getting to the financial area they have by virtue of being board members, a fiduciary right to help ensure that your organization is run financially in a sound manner. And that doesn't just mean making sure that you spend the money that's given wisely. That is true. But also their responsibility is making sure that the money that's necessary to run the organization is raised and they play a big part in helping to raise that. So it's an important component, important aspect that they help to raise that money as well too. And so there's no board members that really should see that helping to raise money is not part of that. That should be off the table. They need to be part of helping to raise money for your organization as well. And that includes helping to be a part, as I said, being a table host, helping to coordinate, head a committee, run a committee, and uh, also going face to face with donors and of course giving themselves as well too. And I always recommend giving sacrificially. Now what does that mean? 
it means something different from everyone. It doesn't mean equal giving, but it does mean equal sacrifice. That the money, the giving that they give to your organization is a stretch for them and that they are trusting big to be able to support your organization. That is very, very important. Now, from an advisory standpoint, you could set up a wide variety of advisory boards based on what your needs are for your organization. If you're a health-based organization, you could get the advice of doctors. If you are a um, rescue mission, you could get the help of local individuals who are experts in feeding the homeless. If you're a faith-based organization, you may have a pastor. If you're a faith-based organization, you may have a pastoral board. All these things are extremely helpful and extremely important to what you're doing. And so I hope, Kelly, that that helps you to understand the importance of, of your board in fundraising. They play an important role, and I'm excited for you to be able to help recruit the right people. And I want to hear how things go with your recruitment and training of your board. Once again, if you liked what you heard, please subscribe to this channel. Also, uh, reach out on Instagram, on Twitter, join us. We've got a Facebook group out where we share creative ideas collectively. And also, you can reach me on Twitter at DevFStrats. Use that hashtag, Jim and Java. And of course, reaching me via email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.